Oh, hey. Excuse me a second. You smell that? What's that smell? Love. Love is in the air. Either that or it could be stagnant swamp water. I mean, we have had a lot of rain. Anyway, good morning. Good to see you all here on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, 2001. 2001. That was a long time ago. 2021. Wow, it's hard to believe already that we've gotten here. But since it is Valentine's Day, uh, you know, let's talk about something kind of related. Uh, I want to. I want us to look today at uh, a marriage mystery. Now, whenever you talk about uh, the relationship between a husband and a wife, you you always have to deal with prevailing attitudes, especially uh, especially right here. You know, we, we all are pretty much set in our ways, and and we all have these prevailing attitudes uh, in our families. Our attitudes and understanding of what makes a good marriage and the roles of a husband and the role of a wife, uh, they may or may not be correct. Uh, you know, even in Christian uh, circles, we've, we've come to accept the attitudes of our culture without really uh, critically examining them in light of the scripture. You know, on the one hand, uh, in today's time, you see a lot of, uh, you know, male chauvinism and, and things like that. Men trying to be men, what they think is making them men. And then on the other hand, you have the women's livers, and uh, that is women trying to prove that they have the freedom to do uh, as they please. And I got to tell you, uh, you know, it's my opinion. You may not agree with it. Both of these ideals are dead wrong. What goes on in your home? In a Dennis to Menace comic strip a while back, uh, <laughs> It illustrated how some of these attitudes uh, uh, come out. Dennis is having cake and milk there over there at the Wilsons. And uh, Mrs. Wilson, she's up there at the sink washing dishes. Mr. Wilson is sitting back trying to read his newspaper. And uh, Dennis wonders out loud why it is that Mr. Wilson never goes to work. And uh, Mr. Wilson uh, tried to explain to Dennis that uh, he is retired. Dennis said, retired? Is that why you loaf all the time? Mr. Wilson tells Dennis that since he's worked so hard for so many years, he's earned the right to loaf all he wants to. And that makes Dennis wonder why Mrs. Wilson doesn't retire and uh, you know he's never seen her loafing she's always busy uh, doing something but Mr. Wilson says she can't retire because she's never worked now Dennis don't quite understand that because he's always seeing Mrs. Wilson cooking or washing and sewing so he can't accept that answer but Mr. Wilson says, no, that's different. She's a housewife. If she retired, who would do the housework? And Dennis asked this question. Couldn't you help? And Dennis, are you trying to make trouble? Mr. Wilson yells. And Mrs. Wilson finally intervenes, telling Mr. Wilson that Dennis is right, and he shouldn't be yelling at him. In the next frame, we see Dennis walking up to his mother there in her garden, and her mother says, I hear the Wilsons arguing. What in the world are they arguing about? Dennis says, I don't know. I came home because I didn't want to get involved. <laughs> There's probably a lot of Mr. Wilsons out there who think that 
they had the biblical understanding of the wife's role. But do, do they really? Do they really have the biblical understanding? On the other hand, of course, there's many wives who have gone to an anti-biblical extreme. We may choose to go to these extremes, but if you want to have God's ideal for marriage in your life, then we have to be committed to the biblical model. Now I want to talk to you again, as I said earlier, about an eternal mystery from the book of Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> now we're going to be reading some out of this, but right now I want you to look at verse 32. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So what's the mystery that's being talked about here? Our view of marriage begins with our view of it. In order to avoid coming to the wrong conclusions about marriage, we have to avoid the most common mistake in defining marriage. The mistake is to view marriage as having a social foundation. Now, for non-Christians, of course, marriage can only be a worldly undertaking. But for Christians, there is an eternal mystery associated with your marriage. The mystery is that marriage is a picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church. This is the highest word concerning marriage. By understanding the mystery of marriage, which is that it pictures the relationship between Christ and the church, we understand the highest purpose of marriage. This purpose goes beyond any social, economic, material, or physical aspect of marriage. It's true that we need marriage for those reasons. We marry for companionship, to raise a family, yes, to meet sexual needs, for economic stability, and for many, many other reasons. But only Christianity gives the spiritual emphasis that brings an eternal significance to this earthly union. It's this eternal and spiritual mystery that redirects our attention from a social contract to a divine union. God has chosen to symbolize the union between Christ and the church in a human marriage relationship. Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, and the church, which is his bride, they are on display in the relationship of a husband to his wife and of the wife to her husband. This relationship is just one that you need to understand and I have to understand in which we do not get to make the rules. No. The rules have already been made, and this is something society better learn quickly today. The philosophies of society around us should never have the opportunity to make the rules for marriage. Marriage is a holy union established by God with a higher purpose in mind than any kind of human fulfillment. In fact, the only way that we'll find marriage truly fulfilling is to pull our marriages in line with God's purpose. And as in the context of this, marriage symbolizing the relationship of Christ to his church, that we can understand the roles of the husband in the roles of the wife. Further, it's in this context of mutual submission that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Pay close attention to verse 21 when we get there, which is a basic requirement for all Christians, male, 
female or whatever. And that is that we're to understand how Christian wives and Christian husbands relate to each other. Well, let's look at that scripture. Ephesians chapter 5 still. Verse 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Oh, wow. There we go. Let's keep going with this. Uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it, present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but, it sh but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause we shall leave we for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. All too often when we hear these words spoken or when we read these words uh, from Ephesians chapter 5, the wrong audience is listening to the wrong part. The husbands, they like those verses 22 through 24. Oh yeah, they like those things. But on the other hand, the wives they really pay close attention to verses 25 through 31. So what practically happens is that the husbands beat their wives over the head with one set of verses, while the wives beat their husbands over the head with the other set of verses. The problem is that the wrong audience has got the wrong verses. See, if you notice, verse 22 begins with the word wives. Verse 25 begins with the word husbands. And that means that, you know, these respective verses are to that person. So, verse 22 is for the wives. Verse 25 is for the husbands. The wives should listen to the message for the wives, not for the husbands. And the husbands should listen to the message that was given to them and not their wives. Let's begin uh, this morning with the message to the wives. God instructs all Christian wives to be subject to your own husband. Now that idea is carried over from the previous verse that we are all exhorted to be subject to one another in the fear of Christ and as a first example wives to your own husbands now the word translated be subject carries an idea of a willing submission of, of yourself not a forced submission a willing submission of yourself true biblical submission 
is never something that is forced. It's not forced on anyone. God doesn't force us to submit to Him, much less to any to anybody else. And we can never force anybody to submit to us. True submission has to come from the person who is doing the submitting. And that's why this message is to the wives. This, this part of the verses is to the wives. Husband, listen, you can't make your wife submit. The more you try, the more you're going to force the exact opposite result. If you start cracking the whip, you're going to find yourself on a buck and bronco. I once heard a radio preacher trying to encourage husbands. He said, husbands, God gave you your wives to complete you, not to finish you off. <laughs> yeah, if you try to make your wives submit, she might finish you off. You know, you might think you're going all Rambo on her, only to find yourself in the end singing like Tiny Tim. Uh, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong. Uh, if your wife doesn't choose to submit, you're never going to force her to. Wives, the message is not from your husbands to submit. They're not the ones calling for you to submit. The message is from God. You are called to submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Now, this is the true spirit of submission. You're not to submit because your husband demands that you submit. You are to submit because the Lord ordained it that way. Now, you can rebel against the command, but understand that as you're rebelling, you're rebelling not against your husband. You're rebelling against the Lord. Submission, we've got it all wrong in our head what that is. It doesn't mean that you're inferior. When our text says that the reason a wife should submit to her husband is because the husband is the head of the wife like Christ is also the head of the church. Now, this doesn't imply that the wife is inferior to the husband. Not even close. It simply reflects the God-ordained order of things. God designed society to function in a certain way. He ordained authority in civil government. There is a headship in civil leaders over those they govern. You see this concept of headship even in the Trinity. Uh, you know, there is total equality in the Trinity. You got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're all equal. But there is an order. We see the Lord Jesus in submission to the Father as he ministered here on earth. Jesus himself said, and I quote, The Father is greater than I. Now he was referring to the headship, not inequality father son and spirit they're all co-equal but each one is revealed in the role they perform so there is a headship and there is a headship in the home there is a divinely ordained order there everybody has a role the husband has a role the wife has a role but both are equal. So, we find the concept of equality and role to be complementary. They're not really contradictory. 
It is true that the husband and the wife are equal. I mean, think about it. Think about Christians. In Christ, there's no such thing as male or female. There's no difference whatsoever. We've all received the same salvation. Man, woman, boy, girl, when we've received salvation, we all stand complete in Christ. But look, God has a role for each of us. And there is, a, there is an order to the way that sh society should function. Therefore, just like the church is subject to Christ, wives ought to be subject to their husbands in everything. Marriage is a picture of the relationship of the church to Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important that the wife heals the Lord's call to submit willingly to the husband's leadership. We should seek to be the testimony of God's divine order, as well as the picture of the relationship of the church to Christ. Okay, now, let's get to the message to the husband. I know you ladies are glad to be off the hot seat. <laughs> get to the message to the husbands. God's word to you is that husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. Look, we are to, we are commanded by God to nourish and cherish our wives just like Christ does the church. The call to demonstrate this kind of unselfish love, let me tell you something, men. This is a high calling indeed to demonstrate, demonstrate that with your wife. In many ways, I want you to understand, guys, the command to the husbands is much more difficult than, the, than God's command to the wives. God is calling us husbands to do far more than utter a few I love yous or a few boxes of candy or uh, two dozen red roses. God is calling you and me, men, to give our very lives for our wives. The pattern of our love for the wife, for the wife, must be like the pattern of Christ's love for his church. Christ's work in the past was to give himself literally for the sake of the church. He's working now in the present to sanctify the church. And he's doing all of this so that in the future he may present to himself the church in all her glory, holy and blameless before the Father. Think about that now. What an awesome responsibility that is. We must give ourselves to our wives so that their true needs will be met physically, emotionally, spiritually, in every way. And to do so means that we will seek to do what is best for our wives, that they may be blessed and encouraged, cared for, and nurtured. The husband if he loves his wife in this way, he's going to find a wife that is willing to submit. Listen, husband, if you have a wife that you're having to try, or you think you have to try to make submit to you, then you better look at the way you're, you're living for her. Look at the things that you're doing. You see, when you're doing things 
the way God ordained it, submission will not be an issue. Her welfare will be the issue. Marriage is like the relationship between God and His church. You would never find Christ sitting on the couch like Mr. Wilson barking orders to his bride. You'd never find that. We must commit ourselves to be husbands who reflect the character of Jesus Christ. What, a, what an awesome responsibility that is. But now, here's the real question. <clears throat> we've talked about what the wives need to do, and we've talked about what the husbands need to do. And you say, Preacher, uh, we really do need to do that, but how do we get there? Who goes first? Well, let me answer that question uh, simply by saying, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the wife. I don't care if you're the husband. Who goes first? You do. You do. The husband says, submit to me. And the wife says, well, when you love me like Christ loves the church, then I will. And this is a useless exercise, bannering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Who goes first? You do. I don't care who you are. Right now, as, as we uh, talk to God together for a moment, take the time, talk to God, thank Him for your wife, thank Him for your husband, and make a commitment to Him that you will be and do your duty as a wife or as a husband right now. And then after we pray, get up and we'll find that person or if they're sitting with you, turn to them and just tell them that you love them and that you want a biblical marriage. And there's the mystery out the window. Holy Father, we thank you, Lord, so much today for the fact that we have loving partners here on this earth. Many of us have had partners for years. Many of us, our partners have gone on to uh, be with you and are waiting for us up there. But Father, we want you to know how much we appreciate them, how much we appreciate you making them part of our lives. And Holy Father, it's our prayer today that you would make me, each one of us, Lord, but especially today, me, the kind of husband that would make Jesus proud and Father, I pray that each and every person listening here today will be in a relationship where they will understand the biblical concepts and not so much the world's concepts. We love you, Father. Keep us safe until we come together again. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week if nothing happens.